Hey everybody out there, Facebook Live World will be going live here on KRGN in just a moment, so stay tuned. There you go, I bet you can hear me now, now that I turned the volume on. You're tuning in, tuning in with me here on KRGN 98.5 The Rock, and I'll be going live here in just a moment. Hi Roberto, I'm ready. All right, all right. Good evening, everyone. This is your host of Prison Break with Shirley Latour, and you are turned tuned in to 98.5 FM The Rock. Um, on tonight, we are going to be doing some things um, on the air on tonight. I'll be on from 6 to about 6.58, and that'll be every single week. You will get to um, hear some things, and tonight, I'm going to be talking about Prison Break. Um, as I looked up that name, um, there is actually a TV drama series that started back in 2005 on Fox TV. And I don't even know the tagline, but th that is the word that was given to me one day called prison break. Now, I'll tell you that I've never been to prison. I've never been to jail or any of those types of things. But I do know what it feels like to be in prison, prison in my mind and have a spiritual be in a spiritual prison so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to first of all we're going to break down those two words and before i even get into it i want to send a big shout out to mr ron grace here at um 98.5 just for just for pushing me out there because i never would have done this on my own but praise be to god that someone else sees things in you that sometimes we don't see in our own self so thank you mr grace um Yes, sir. Um, and I also want to send a shout out to my pastor and my first lady, um, the Gilcrest over at Liberty Christian Center. Hello, hello, and God bless you all. Thank you so much. And so on tonight, I'm going to be dropping in and talking about prison. And so me loving to teach, I like to give definitions of things. And so first of all, what is prison? Prison, um, according to the dictionary, is a building in which people are legally held as a punishment for a crime they have committed or while awaiting trial. There are also some synonyms to that word, jail, the penal institution, place of detention, lockup, place of confinement, guardhouse, or the detention center. Those are some words that can be used for prison. And like I said, while I have never been in an actual prison, there are some times when I was certainly in a place of detention. I felt like I was in lockup. I felt like I was in a place of confinement. I was certainly guarded and I was at the detention center. Come on, somebody. I know it's not just me. I know that you have been in those places where you have come through some things and you weren't necessarily able to tell anyone about your struggles. Struggles, and you have you found yourself in prison prison in your mind and so I like to speak about the natural things because I am a registered nurse and so I do know a little bit about health and also from the spiritual standpoint of the house so prison anybody can be in prison at any time and I do want to point out that guess what sometimes a person can end up in prison but they're not guilty of the thing that they have been um, accused of, but they have to go through that judicial system, which is not always done in the proper manner. So sometimes people end up in prison, though they are innocent. So you may have ended up in a prison, though it was no fault of your own, but grace and praise be unto God, our Father, that He has the key to your prison. Our next one is break. In the, in the verb tense, you have something to say, sir? <laughs> in the verb tense of break, there are a few definitions. It can be a transitive verb, meaning to separate into parts with suddenness or violence. Broke a plate, that is a transitive verb. It can also mean or, or, or be the break the chocolate bar in half. I am actually, there's quite a few definitions for break, and I'm going to read off because I know that there is one of those breaks that um, that can speak to whatever your brokenness is. Um, I just want to give some shout outs to those who have tuned in. Don't think that I'm ignoring you on Facebook Live. When I get into a flow, I just have to go ahead and flow with it. So, hey, to Miss um, Hannah, to Lindy, 
to um, Dominique, to Terry, to Cleopatra, to Miss Shirley Long, to um, Apostle Sandra. That's all I can see right now, but I'm going to flow on. And so with break, some of the other breaks are to fracture a bone of a bodily part. The blow broke her arm to dislocate or dislocate and fracture a bone. Number six definition is to cause an open wound, mm. as in you broke the skin. There's some also uh, open wounds that we have that we have not allowed to heal and to seal up, but we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. To cut into and turn over the surface of, as in breaking the soil of the ground, and some of those grounds are hard ground. You're not able really to till them. Um, to render inoperative or break his watch or broke his watch. Another definition definition is to violate or transgress, meaning they broke the law. To break a promise, breaking conventions. And I know y'all, as I'm reading these definitions, I know y'all can test to some of these things and apply them to your life, whatever they may be. But guess what? You can get over those breaks, those breaks in life, those breaks in your mental um, ability. Those can be recovered. And so we're going to continue on with the definitions, because, again, I know that some of those things apply to some of us. And I don't talk to you about things that I've never experienced before. I like to tell you from a place that I've been, because guess what? I was real broken. But God, he came in and he healed me and he did it marvelously he did it miraculously and he did it quickly so that I could reach out to you here in radio land and on Facebook live and so I'm so thankful that he healed my brokenness D is to make or affect by cutting forcing or pressing through it can be a break a trial through the woods a trail through the woods to disrupt the order or compactness of break formation so when you break formation you know everybody's going in one direction and there is an order to that. And so whatever way that the, the formation is moving, because I did serve in the military, so I know a little bit about um, moving as a unit and going in one direction. But when you break the formation, guess what? You turn in an opposite direction. You move on your own and you go uh, against the flow of everything else. And so guess what? Sometimes we need to break formation. If the crowd is going the wrong way, guess what? You need to break that formation and move Move out according to what the, the word of God tells you to do and do what his will is for your life. So break that formation. If they're going the wrong way, don't follow. Next definition of break. To defeat utterly and end as an effective force. It is also used devastation to break the enemy. I kind of want to talk about that. Huh. To break the enemy. So we all know that we do have an enemy, and his name is Satan. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he doesn't like any of us. We may think that he does because we, we, we do so many things, and um, we don't see sometimes the consequences of our actions right away. And sometimes we blame people for our brokenness, and we blame other things on our brokenness but truth be told we are not fighting against flesh and blood we are fighting against principalities we are fighting against those things in high places that come against us and so when the enemy comes against you I know it's stated in in a, a, a certain way in the Bible it says when the enemy comes against you like a flood the Lord will raise up a standard against them but I like to move the comma and say when the enemy comes against you comma like a flood, the Lord comes and he raises up a standard against you. That means the enemy may come one way, but guess what? The Lord, he comes in and like a flood, you know, those waters that come that people can't get away from. You know, that tsunami that rushed in um, some years ago and destroyed multitudes and the people could not get away like a flood. The Lord can come in and he can rescue you from those things that you have been broken from. But guess what? You first you got to give it to him. We carry so much on our backs. He told us to, to rest our cares upon him because he cares for us. It's not for us to carry. And I know sometimes it can be hard because for a long time, I did it too. I tried to carry the load on my own. I tried to be silent and just to move through the things that I was going through. But guess what? That was not my job. And so guess what? I suffered until I was ready to be broken free. 
So prison break, we can um, have a, a be in prison in our own mind, sometimes because we want to, sometimes because we don't know any better, and sometimes just because we, we like being broken or we don't know what it is to be whole, and so we think that that's a normal thing. But I can attest and assure you that that's not a normal thing, and there is healing. Grab on to it. No, another definition of um, break is to crush the spirit of, to make retractable or submissive, like a horse. Horses, um, wild horses especially, when you get on those and you try to ride them, or if, if they even let you on their back, they are not submissive, and you have to break in a horse in order to be able to ride it. I don't know a lot about horses, but I do know um, just from seeing them in the past and watching movies that you do have to break a horse in. They're, because they're naturally wild, they're meant to roam free. They're not just going to allow you to ride on their back, so they have to be broken in. Some of us have to be broken in because we want to do our own thing. We don't want to, first of all, submit to the will of God. We don't want to submit to our, um, our, uh, our spouses, and that goes for males and females. Now, we don't want to submit to one another. We don't want to submit to our bosses on the job. We don't want to even submit to our friends because God does put people in our lives that we do need to submit to. And it's not just um, for a personal reason, but he has things for all of us to do. And so we do need to submit to authority figures. Submit to the police officers. We know we need to do what is um, what is right by the law, um, and just keep on moving and just be who we were called to be in this earth. And we all walk around and we have we all have a job to do. But if we're in prison, guess what? We can't reach the masses like we were supposed to do. We all have a calling. Some of us were given those five, um, given those five talents. Some of us were given those three talents, and some was just given that one. But guess what? We are to do. We are to multiply them, whatever they are. We have to use them to the full effect. I'm going to keep on moving with these definitions of break. So another one is to exhaust in health, strength, or capacity. And this is one I can really attest to because. When I was at the end of my rope, when I was at the end of some things that I was going through, I was really exhausted. I was really exhausted. I can I can say that. Um, but because I didn't tell anybody, some of other people didn't know I was exhausted because I had on this Superman cape. Because I was in the military and I was an officer and, you know, a registered nurse at the time, um, working in the hospital, taking care of other people. Yet I was broken. But I couldn't show that to anybody. I was a leader in the church. Yet I couldn't show that to anybody because I felt like I was all alone. Knowing that I wasn't, but I felt like I was all alone. And so we are exhausted sometimes in our health and um, our strength and our capacity. Why? Because we haven't totally given, over, given it over to God. So at this time, we're going to take a break. Stay locked in with KRGN 98.5 The Rock. That wasn't the point for a break. What? That was. It's all good. I was coming to talk. I wanted to ask you, why did you feel? Why? Why was it so comfortable for you to continue to put up the front that okay. it was okay? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, because so many, so often in churches today or civil organizations, that people will have a a mask, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and, and be comfortable in the mask, mm -hmm. but still cry. God has given us beauty for ashes. Yes, but we would never ever use the ashes. We will. We literally will call the false beauty. Yes, and I just wanted to ask you why. We, why was that so comfortable for you? Okay. Well, as soon as you put me back on, I'm gonna answer that question because they still I, listening. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's too easy for yes. me. Yes. You know. It was just a point of dialogue. Absolutely. All right, y'all, give me a second. Let me get my earphones back on. I know y'all heard what he was talking about, the question that he asked me, and I'm going to answer that Especially in just a moment. Just talking about breaks, too. You know, certain breaks hinder your mobility, hinder oh, your progress. 
especially if you if you break a major limb like a leg or absolutely you, know, you can still walk and progress with an arm break that's good but if you break a leg yep you absolutely can't, you can't progress and guess what else you can't do you definitely cannot assist or anybody care anybody else anybody else my god so let me let me get you back on <laughs> So y'all heard the question, the thing that he asked, and I'm going to answer it as soon as he put, puts me back on, and we're going to keep rocking and rolling. All right, we are back on live with The Prison Break here with your host, Shirley Latour. And during that break, I had a question that was asked of me. We're going to have him ask that question again, and we're going to answer it for you. I forgot what the question was. Not sure. <laughs> no, 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 I got it. Um, you, before the break, you were speaking about putting on a mask or appearing one way when your heart was totally in another direction. So my question was, why did you feel comfortable with that, whether you it was on your job as, a, as an officer in the United States military or whether it was as a leader in the church, why was that so comfortable for you? Um, sir, I, I won't say that it was comfortable for me. It really wasn't. Something that happened in my early days, well before um, coming into the place that I was in, and I can't tell my whole story on tonight, but those who know me know that I'd come through a lot of things, and when I was in this particular um, position, it wasn't that I really wanted to be there, um, but because I'd had a serious heartbreak, and I felt worthless, and... I didn't know where to turn, and when this person came to me um, that I did end up in a long-term relationship with and in marriage, um, and then that person um, began a church, I felt obligated. Mm -hmm. I felt somewhat trapped because there was a facade going on in one place, and you know how we we hide things behind closed doors but in open light it's a totally different thing and so because I was broken and I felt worthless I felt like I had no voice and I was the voice that I did have was taken from me in the home it was as if I had to go along with it because um you know how some people have a very charismatic appearance and they're able to win people over I felt like, because I saw that going on, I felt like I was not going to be believed. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was my duty to hold up the blood the stain banner. You know how we say that. Yeah. And so I was, I was going on, and I was like, okay, well, God, you called me to be a wife, and I want to be the best wife that I can be. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know structure, background, um, and because I got married when I was broken and that person was broken too I didn't really know that mm -hmm. it was just something I did mm -hmm. and because again because I felt like I was not gonna be believed and because I was angry because I was judging because I felt like the church folks should have known like you know how we always say you but know they got they uh Somewhat, but we have people in the church who say, I have spiritual discernment and I can see this, that. Oh, well, why didn't you see that I was really broken? It was all over my face. That was my thing back then. I'll correct that now because it is not anyone else's responsibility to, um, to make a person open up. But because I was, I had buried some wounds way deep mm -hmm. on the inside. I didn't know how to let them out. So what would be your advice now to someone that is going through the exact same thing, whether they are um, at their job or whether they are in an organization and they don't feel like they can be 100% honest or just 
open about what it is that they're struggling with? First of all, um, if you don't have a Christian base, because I do know that there are people, in all honesty, there are people who are, you know, there are people who are, are not saved. And so we can't um, force certain things on them. But what I would say, I would say to you to go to a trusted friend. I would say to you to really just open up, just open up your mouth and talk that thing out loud because that is a way of release. Um, go see your pastoral counselors, go see, you know, your chaplain on your military bases, go see somebody that you know to be someone trusted, um, that you can talk to because I, again, I felt like I didn't have anyone and I felt like even in the church world, I couldn't tell them either. But you, were you, were you ever alone? Not it, not away from God. No, yeah. Yeah. I was not. But I, I felt like I was, and so those perceptions, those are real things. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with it? There were many nights I cried. There were many nights that I just kind of shut into myself, knowing, but I knew that God had given me promises. That there were complete strangers He sent to me and gave me words of encouragement, gave me prophecies. Mm -hmm. Um, things that he put down on the in, the inside of me that I know that I am to reach that he had he had given me those things before, and so in my mind and because I have two children that I love so dearly, I said to myself I can't give up I can't throw in the towel because first of all my children need me, and there is promises that are waiting on me, and because those promises are waiting on me I can't throw in the towel I gotta keep pressing on mm -hmm. and even in those promises those things that people came to me I'm not gonna say this is hard to say because I, I, I knew it way back then but I suppressed it and I tried to make it all right in none of these prophecies was a husband ever in the picture of those things mm -hmm. But because I was trying to make stuff work on my own, you know how we take control of stuff and we just, we think we got it all together. <laughs> no, Lord, I'm going to make this work. God didn't want everything because I, that it, it was not of him any, anyway. Mm -hmm. He says, when he puts two together, mm -hmm. let no man put asunder. But guess what? He didn't put all of that stuff together. Mm -hmm. We did it. Mm -hmm. And so he, when we don't back it, it's not backed up in his word. We, it, has it has to line up. Mm -hmm. So I knew it didn't line up in the first place. But I stayed there trying to do what I thought to be correct, what I, what I thought to be right. Okay. So I really want to ask another question. Yes. I, I got to let you get back into your, because you, you had a preaching flow on. <laughs> you were there. Um, being that you were a leader in church mm -hmm. and being that you were a mother, and you were a leader on your job. Mm -hmm. How and it, a businesswoman. And a business owner. How is it that you ever came to the realization that you could lean to your own understanding? How did I come to that? Mm -hmm. That on my own understanding or leaning on God's understanding? No, how did you get to the place of you could lean on your own understanding? Well. And you were comfortable, by the way. Growing up, I came up in a household where my parents were also mm -hmm. pastor, mm -hmm. pastor wife, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but at home it was a different way. Mm -hmm. So it, <laughs> it was normal for me to see dysfunction. Ah, okay. Those are the pieces. I could, I could say a whole lot, Past but practices and experience. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I was the only one out of six children there. I have five um, siblings and out of the six of us, I was the only one that got married. So I didn't have siblings to that I could turn to and say, hey, because they had never experienced that. Right. So I couldn't go to them. I felt like I couldn't go to mom or dad. And when I realized that things were haywire, it was too late. I mean, I knew they were haywire. But when I realized that the same pathology, those generational curses were on me, it was after the fact. It was years into that. Okay. Okay. So now, um, 
right here. It's about 30 after the hour. Mm -hmm. um, so today's broadcast is being brought to you by Grace to Recover. Grace to Recover is a nice handle mm -hmm. of, of how to encourage yourself and how to get from a point of hopelessness mm -hmm. to a place full of hope. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to allow Miss Shirley Latour to tell you where you can pick up a copy of this book as well as um, what else the book holds. Okay. Well, Grace to Recover was released just a few weeks ago. Actually, last week we had the um, the um, book signing for it, but Grace to Recover can be found on my website, ShirleyLatourEnterprises.com. You can also find it on Amazon.com and just go ahead and search for Grace to Recover. Put the um, semicolon and put how to and then the book will come right up at the top of your feed. Um, this book came about because again, God healed me. He healed me quickly. And I'm telling you, I danced out of the courtroom last year because I knew he'd freed me. And... Um, the tagline for this or the subtitle is how to divorce hurt, addiction, and overcome trials with the power of a loving God. And in this book, it is divided into um, four different sections. I speak on addiction. Um, there's also divorce and domestic violence is a topic. Sickness and mental illness is a topic. And single parenthood and teen pregnancy. Those are how the book is broken down into, and there are 11 um, authors in this book t in total. And it is, it is talking about just that, because I, I tagged it, How to Divorce Hurt, because divorce is not just used in the sense of you go to court and you, you, know, you break free from another person, but divorce is leaving things behind. It is breaking free of... Um, just those things, you know, hurts, addictions, um, breaking free from things that have you bound. For me, that's what divorce is. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a courtroom. And so there are many things I know that you can take away from this book. If it's not for some, from something that I said, another one of these co-authors in this book, they have been through something that you are encountering. But I can tell you with the power of of the most loving God ever, He can turn your situation around, but He's not going to do it without your hand. Guess what? You're going to have to let Him do it. You're going to have to allow Him into your space. Guess what? It's, it's His space anyway, but sometimes we close doors and we don't allow Him into every room in our house. But I want you to open up every room in your house. Allow Him to sweep out the cobwebs because He really does love you. He loved you more than words could ever say. He gave his only son to die just for you and just for me. I'm telling you, Mr. Grace, um, in this last year, I really found out just how much God loves his daughter. Mm. And it brings me to tears. Well, this, this is not the time for you to cry. So I'm not going to cry. And even up. if I do, I'm going to talk right on through it. <laughs> good, good. But, um... And that, and that's a that's a really really powerful statement that you made, and I am glad that you are here on Prison Break and providing an outlet to anyone that may be hurting and don't know how to get beyond the hurt. Yes. Um, and you're absolutely right. You have to surrender. Mm -hmm. And but when you say that you realize over this last year just how much mm -hmm. the Lord loved you, mm -hmm. then I am hoping, and not even say I'm hoping, you will soon realize just how much he values you. I realize that. <laughs> I do realize that. And it's just not to you. It's mm -hmm. um, the, the, the Lord is a, a he loves you. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, I understand we talk about Calvary's cross and him going to the cross for us. And, and yes, that was the ultimate sacrifice he made for us. But the once you realize the value that that the Lord places on you mm -hmm. just to go to the cross for you, just to share with you. Mm -hmm. So um, I really would like for you to speak to um, a young single mother right now mm -hmm. who is 
who feels like she's at her breaking point with paying pa um, past relationship failures and she just wants to be healed and she wants to be loved but she does not know how to obtain that. That's just how broken she is. Can you speak to her please? Absolutely. I can speak to that because I am she. I, I, see, I knew you was educated until you said that right now. <laughs> I am she. I, I am she. <laughs> okay. Because I have been there, young lady, you are not alone. There is purpose for your life. You may have felt like you have done so much wrong and that you can't go on and that he doesn't love you. But that is an enemy. That's the enemy's lie. And even something that we were talking about on the Daniel plan, those thoughts that come up, write them down and ask, is it true? And if it's not true, cast it down, throw it against the wall, break it into pieces because it's not true. You are a valued daughter of the king and no one can love you like he does. I promise you that he will never leave you or forsake you. He said it in his word. And so when you're at the last of your wits, know that the Lord is there. He said that you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made in his image. And he meant that. And he meant it. Absolutely, he meant it. And so I had my first child at um, 19. And I talk a little bit about this in the book, but I had my first child at 19. I was half a world away and I felt ashamed because I felt like my mother. I thought my mother was going to disown me by getting pregnant at 19. Though I was in the military already, taking care of myself, but something in my head said that mom was not going to accept me or this child. And so I live with that needlessly, not thinking that she was going to be there. But I can tell you, those thoughts that we have in our heads, many of them are not true. I want you to reach out to someone. And even when we feel like no one else is there, the Lord is always there. He is always willing to stretch out his hand. All you need to do is stretch up your hand to him. Even the woman with the issue of blood, she'd been every place she could because she was bleeding out and she was unclean according to everyone's standards. But according to Jesus, she was loved. And all she needed to do was to even have the thought and to reach out her hand, to touch the hem of his garment. She didn't even really need to say anything. All she needed to do was believe that he could do it. And guess what? When she did that, she was made whole. Because you've just pushed me around right into what I was going to say in Mark 5 and 25 through 29. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. And she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. All you got to do is reach up your hand to the master. He's waiting on you. That's all you have to do is have a sincere heart, believe that he can change it, and guess what? It's already done. So don't be afraid to reach up your hand to him because he again he is never he's not going anywhere he died just for you and he rose again on that third day and has all power in his hands but guess what if you believe him in him if you have accepted him as your lord and savior you have that same power in your mouth for many years i didn't know that that i had the power in my mouth but when i began to speak and to declare those things to be so, everything changed. And I can tell you, he's a mighty good God. He's a mighty good father. You may not have your natural daddy in your life, but you have the best father that there ever could be. His name is Jesus. 
Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. I'm glad we got Kleenex on the table right now. I'm good. Then we're going tra <laughs> to transition back, back into the topic now. Yes. You were talking about breaks earlier. Yes. And um, in your talks about break, then um, could you bring a comparison or a simulation between a break naturally and a break spiritually? Absolutely. So um, even as you were talking um, before um, and how you can break an arm and you can still go on, you, you know, you get it patched up and um, the, the bone is um, put in a cast and it, whether it's a long bone or a short bone, you can do some things. It, it may hamper you a little bit if, if you're right handed and you break your right arm, then guess what? You may have to you learn to use your left arm, but you can still move. Um, you can still pick up a few things here and there, but you have a little bit of restriction. However, if you break a leg, you are immobilized, and depending on where that the bone is broken, especially if you break your femur, which is at the top of your leg, you're really not going anywhere. You certainly not cannot carry weight. And not only can you not carry your own weight, you certainly cannot carry other people's weight. And so... Um, in the spirit, when we are broken, we may be able to do a few things. We may be able to reach a few people in that, but we have to wait on our healing to come um, for us to be able to reach the masses. And it, and it's so true and so profound because even last uh, September of last year, no, it was September of 2017. Things are just moving so fast. Um, God spoke to me. Um, out in my out in my backyard, and what he said to me was, "You'd been blocked intentionally, but I'm going to shoot you further than what you could ever imagine." And he said, "The people that you had been trying to reach, you couldn't reach them just yet, but I'm going to shoot you out." Ron, this is the shoot now, <laughs> like. Because I waited for a whole year and I'm like, Lord, what in the world? I, I know you told me this. I heard you myself. It was an audible voice out in my garden, out in my backyard. And I walked through some things for that next year um, through September. And then that next month, that's when the book stuff came. And I never imagined that many people were going to respond. And then here you come with the, the whole radio thing. And so his promises are true, but guess what? He had to wait until I was fixed. Mm -hmm. He had to wait until those pins that were in my broken bones mm -hmm. healed over mm -hmm. that they could not be when the pins came out or the pins dissolved themselves, that there was no residue of that thing. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there was there 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 is a a wound mark there's a a a scar there, but when it's completely healed over, guess what? When you tug on it, okay. it doesn't come open. It's actually when the bones heal, it's stronger. It's stronger than it was before. Why? Because it's been calcified. There you go. And so it's, it, it has some, um, what do you call it, not foundation, but it has fortification. Mm -hmm. There you go. It is now fortified. So when you've been broken, when you have come through some things, then when those things come up again, guess what? You have the tools in your toolbox to be able to make it through that thing. Because I'm telling you, I'm a lot stronger now than what I was before. And I was a much quieter individual way back then. But now it's like I can't shut up because God has been so good to me. Mm -hmm. And even through the trials, he never allowed me to lose my mind. And that is huge because there's a lot of people in institutions behind a heartbreak, behind some something that came up in their life and they were not able to handle it. But I'm so thankful that even through the midst of all the stuff that I went through, he kept my mind. Because I want it to be kept. Yes. So are you telling me you're thankful for your brokenness? I'm thankful for my brokenness. I don't wish that I had gone through some of the stuff that I had gone through. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful that he kept me through those things because he had purpose for me. And I could not reach that purpose without having gone through some things. 
sometimes we we we're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to cry and I don't want to feel this pain and I don't I don't want to well guess what that pain is a signal to your brain that something is wrong mm -hmm. and what are you going to do with it what are you going to do with it it's a blessing to have some pain because if, if you get burned and you don't have any feeling in your hands and your feet and you're burning guess what you about to die for real because you have no feeling the pain was put there for a reason Yes. And then, now you can't be sensitive. You can't be sensitive. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a, I should just write that down because that's a whole nother segment on its own. Yes, we have to be sensitive to the needs of others. Absolutely. And we can do that more so when we, we've been there, when we experience those things. Mm -hmm. I can tell a person who's, who's, who was given everything because they don't have that same compassion. But if you've ever walked in those shoes, if you've ever been homeless, then you know how it feels. Yeah. If you've ever not been able to provide for your family, then you know how it feels. If you've ever um, had a disease process, you know how it feels. So guess what? You can be have more empathy for that person. And so I have empathy for those who have been broken hearted because I've been there, I've done that. I have empathy for those who are teenage mothers, been there, done that. I have empathy for those who, you know, pastor's wives, because I've been there, I've done that. I have empathy for those who have um, health issues. Though I was never diabetic, I experienced a, something that it, my blood sugar dropped. One day I was in nursing school, my blood sugar dropped. And I didn't know what it was at first, because I'm not diabetic, and it never dropped like th quite like that. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you, I thought I was dying, for real. It was an impending doom. You're laughing, but I experienced every symptom of someone who was going into, about to have, going to a diabetic coma. And it is not a fun thing. And you know, the reason why I'm laughing is because how is it even possible, except it be God, that you can experience symptoms of something that you do not possess? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you're laughing. Yes, yes. And I never really thought about it that way. But I know he wants me to be able to reach people in those instances. So I can, I can go to that person and be like, I understand what it feels like. Though we mm -hmm. may go through this different things or, or similar things, all of our experiences are different, even in those same situations. Mm -hmm. So um, him allowing me to experience that, it makes me have a heart for them and find a way to help them where they are. And then I have the medical experience, you know, to back me up, you know, that nursing experience to back me up so that I can reach out to them. Somebody who has, you know, hypertension. I have a passion for that. But um, it's because, first of all, I've, 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 I've witnessed those things. I have, you know, I have experienced those things. And so um, God doesn't put us here for ourselves. And he wants us to reach out to others. And though I may not be able to reach the prostitute on the, on the corner, I can reach that one who was doing stuff behind closed doors. So we all have a past. Absolutely, we do. And so I may be able to reach the one that my neighbor is not able to reach. So he put us all here for a purpose and a reason. And we have to tap into those things. So the person I can reach may not be the person that you can reach. But again, he puts us all here so we can reach out around the world and to grab somebody by the hand and let them know that there is hope. Yeah. And um, I, I, I do understand that you are a, a godsend. And I'm telling you, every time I look at you, I just, I just get tickled. <laughs> I do. And the reason why is because I know God is real. Mm -hmm. without, the, without the shadow of I doubt. Mm -hmm. I know he's real. Absolutely. And not for the things that he's done in your life, mm -hmm. but because of the things that he's done in my life. Mm -hmm. But now when I look at you, I can see his strength mm -hmm. on you. From the mean lady that I met. <laughs> <laughs> he he. That's not true, y'all. I was never mean. <laughs> okay. okay, she was never mean. Okay, see, see here's the thing. Here's the Perceptions. Thing. No, 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 you're mean. You're mean. Because when you're in pain, yeah. 
any person that's, that's ha- that has a headache, they're quick tempered. That's true. Whenever whenever someone's in pain, yes, they are not to be messed, messed with. with. Yes, that's so, so true. So. That's true. Yeah. I apologize. If I ever appeared mean or if I ever snapped at you, I do apologize. (laughs) Thank the Lord. (laughs) All these trials made me pray harder too. Thank you, Jesus. And and for (laughs) for everyone that's listening out there, that you're going through something, you're facing something, and you don't know an outlet, um, I definitely would like for Minister uh, Latour to definitely convey to you that you have an outlet. Mm-hmm. You giving up does not ever have to be an option. It does not. We we have so many intercessors. We have so many people who want to see the best for you. But regardless of how many people there are, you will never ever see the best for yourself. No matter I could see you as a beauty queen, but if you don't ever see yourself mm-hmm. as that, you will never ever be able to walk into mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. So um, Minister Latoya, this is your mic. Why are you still letting me talk? Because <laughs> it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> that point is absolutely true because I people told me, you know, different things throughout the years, but I didn't, but I really didn't believe it. And so at a certain point, he got allowed certain women to come into my circle. I'm so thankful for them in the last few years, in the last three or four years of my life, that he allowed people to come into my circle. When, first of all, when I was ready for them. Because I wasn't ready for them before. But he allowed certain people to come into my circle and minister to me. Though they didn't, they didn't really know what they were doing at the, at the time. But even the simple process of wrapping my hair, wrapping in God's love, that began a change in me like no other. Because I couldn't see my beauty at first. I really couldn't. In that simple process that she didn't know what she was that she, what she was doing at that moment. But when I looked up, I'm like, who is that? Mm-hmm. But it had to start from the inside of me. And then God allowed me to start feeling those those things. <laughs> and so again, people can tell you all day you you're you're great and you you know you, you you do such a great job. But if you don't feel it on the inside, if you don't feel God's love for yourself, then it's going to be a hard thing. But I can assure you that, that that time is now. It really is for you to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and know that you are loved by the greatest person that there ever was, the greatest spirit um, that there ever was. And um, I just I just want you to know that there there's hope there is there is a new day and there's so much out there that we can have. Mm -hmm. So much that we can possess that really is already ours, but we haven't opened our mouth to say it's ours. But I just believe the impossible now. (laughs) And there there is absolutely no stopping in what God is going to do in this time and in this season. You know, when you. When you start believing the impossible, absolutely, everything becomes possible. It does. So. It sure does. <laughs> so it does. Next week on Prison Break, mm-hmm. can, you, can you give us a snapshot? <laughs> <laughs> next week on Prison ba- Break, I was actually somewhere today, and um, this subject came about, and I was like, "Oh, constipation." Good. <laughs> constipation in the natural. And in the spirit. Inside the four walls or outside the four walls? Both of them walls. (laughs) All them walls. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So, next week's topic, y'all, on prison break is constipation. And questions, if someone had questions for you, want to reach you, how would they be able to do that? I can be reached at 254-300-6027. I can also be reached here on Facebook by my name, Shirley Latour, and there is a space after the L and the A. So Shirley, L-A, space, T-O-U-R. You can reach me um, on Out of the Shadows Outreach Ministry. That's one of the pages that I have on one of the ministries that God has given me. Um, You can reach me at Shirley at ShirleyLatourEnterprises.com. And and when, how soon will it be before you'll be inviting guests up to sit and and dialogue and discuss things with you. Um, in the next week or two, we'll have somebody <laughs> up here. 
I just want the people to know. So Absolutely. Like, I cannot believe you got me laughing. And this is not even a, a laughing topic. You hey. Got, you got me laughing. Sometimes it can be funny. It, it is. We cause our own constipation by the crap that we eat. Yep. All righty then. Yep. What, you <laughs> in, what you put in your mouth mm -hmm. got to come out somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Okay, so... Say your goodbyes to the people so we can get on the body. All right. Well, this has um, been your girl, Shirley Latour, with Prison Break right here on 98.5. I want you to tune in next week to Constipation. We're going to be talking about some things. I'll actually be up here tomorrow, sir, um, okay. with Mother Denise at 12 o'clock. Yes, I will. I'm not going to give away the topic, but I'll be back up here tomorrow with Mother Denise. Y'all tune in tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon on, on Mother Denise's set. Segment, but hey, y'all be blessed. Stay in there. Stay in the race. Even if you have to come in on broken pieces, stay in the race. Oh, Don't give up. My. God is good. So y'all be blessed. Mother Denise, Mother Powell. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right, y'all. Thank you all for tuning in to Prison Break. This has been Prison Break. has been brought to you by Grace to Recover. Right here on KRGN 98.5 The Rock. And if you are feeling disconnected, saddened, or in pain, there's grace for your recovery. So um, just go, um, where, where is it that they can get? Amazon, they can get the book? They can get the, um, the book on Amazon. If they want a, a, an autograph copy, they'll need to get it from Shirley Latour Enterprises. Shirley Latour Enterprises. Dot com, yep. Right. Okay, so are you all can just call her and you sure can. she'll have your copy up here next week. Absolutely. Or tomorrow, depending on when y'all call her. Yes. Okay. All right, everybody. So we'll see you all next week all right. right here on KRGN 98.5 The Rock, your community station. All right, y'all. Right, well, that's the end of my segment. Um, again, you'll see me again on tomorrow with Mother Denise here at 12 o'clock noon. And then next Monday from 6 to 7. That's every single week from 6 to 7 on Monday. Right before Marriage with the King. So y'all stay tuned to KRGN. If you don't have the app, go ahead and download it. All right, y'all be blessed. Talk to you later. Bye.